This week we are going to do like a review of the art graphs, okay? Now I know I've spoken about them before, but I haven't actually done like a, like a comprehensive review. <laughs> so originally I wanted to do this whole review out and about. So there are gonna be segments of me using the art graft out and about, one of which the audio was compromised because I filmed on my phone. You know when you say you need to learn from your mistakes? Clearly, takes me a bit longer. I'll do voiceover. What are you sniffing for? Truffles? So I decided to come out and walk in the dogs and everything. So I got a, what's this one? Art Creations Talons. I've never had this before, but I figured that it was good. I did this one. It's literally just the tree that I'm looking at now, but I will link it now. So that you can see it, you get a visual. So, you know, I really like the composition. And obviously this week's video is about swatching new materials and new tools just out and about. So what I've got with me, so this is where I compromised my audio, but basically I've got a Derwent water brush pen and the three primary colors art graphs. Um, and I'm just basically explaining all that good stuff. Yeah. Are you on the phone? So I'll probably have to get rid of a lot of the audio because I'm ridiculous. So I'm just gonna, oh, this pen, is it? Oh my God, what is going on? Right, so that's that. I'm never good with these things. Oh my God, that was a bloody nightmare, wasn't it? What I'm gonna do is do some quick, quick notes. It's really rainy today as well nightmare it's probably not the best footage but it'll be fine when you get some of that yellow in i also got the white ones i was just traveling light today because with the dogs you can imagine it's a bloody nightmare and i don't want to put too much water on this because as you know i've got to go places grass is just so mental and get those down really really quickly just get that grass in um, I want to be able to, I'm kind of trying to block it up into like foreground, midground, all that good stuff. So I don't know how that's going to work out. So yeah, this video is literally just taking these art graphs to different locations, showing you how I use them and then doing like a review. And then what I'll also do is take you through the work that I've been doing. Obviously, the reason I've gone to multiple locations and not one is because the weather is dodge. Um, it's quite warm today, but it's intermittently like raining every now and again. It's so annoying. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. If you don't know what art graft is, the art graft, I believe, is like the leak of the vegetable world. Really underrated. I found them really hard to get used to originally because they're just so unlike anything I've used before. They are like ink and like soft pastel had a baby and that baby was hard as nails is what i said that is still the case these do last a long time and they can take a battering and they only really became like a game changer when i started taking them out and about because i got on with them so well i then ended up getting the three primary colors as well as the monochrome i mean look at that white battered i'm probably going to need to replace that soon they come in this like little tray when you buy a pack of three or the pack of six. They have got two new colours out. I think it's magenta and like a emerald green. Can't remember, but getting hold of them, nails. You could probably get them in America, but I've looked everywhere in the UK, can't get them, which is really disappointing. The other thing is, is that you can pick them up and use them now. I've used them so much that they're, they've almost congealed and actually gone into the cork holder. Now it's not the best holder. They do come with these little plastic sort of sleeves to keep them in place. And if that rattles about, you can get, which is what I use. I've got these things, which are like big elastic bands. Like they almost look like giant hair top. 
how? <laughs> Oh, real life people, real life. Anyway, so yeah, I got these. I will ordinarily just slip it on and either tie it round like so, or you can tie it round like that. That just ensures that when you're moving around in your go bag, that it's not gonna slip off or go anywhere. As I said, you can use them as, See if I can get one out that isn't so compromised, this one. You can get them out and use them. They're, they're called tailor shapes, so they're like tailor chalks. You know, tailors use them with the chalks. So you can draw with them, as you can see. Probably not the best swatching area on the hand. Oh well. I mean, mine have still got... <laughs> they still got stones and rubble in. I don't know where I can get you to see that. So what I mean, they've still got like stones and things in for when I went to the bloody beach. Nightmare. There's very few colours that I couldn't mix with, with this set. The white has been a game changer. Now I know that some people would say they compromises the actual pigment. I don't think it does too much. They are chalky by nature, like in terms of their application, but I don't think it matters too much. You know, when you're out and about, slide the little things off, pop them round you, take a water brush, you know, and away you go. I went out the other week and you will see this and I just took the three primary colours and that's all I took. I had that and a, and a sketchbook. I mean, if you want to go lightweight and the fact that you can draw with them as well is also a really good prof. Again, versatility. I'm one of these that if I'm going to spend money on materials, they need to be fairly versatile. You can draw with them, you can paint with them, you can mark make with them. They're that shape where they're not like a pencil. So for example, right, I've got a paintbrush here. Just imagine this was a pencil. Stay with me. When you're drawing, you inherently want to go like this. Yeah, get in there like so, like meh, meh, meh. No, can that, that, you know, to draw and everything that's if you want to get loose now you can with these you can do all of that sort of stuff you can put it down onto paper and then wet the paper or put it down onto wet paper the mark making you can get out of this it's just i really do need to buy another white i mean it really is yeah oh. So I've gone to several locations, one of which was um, Seascale Beach. I've never brought you there before, and I have intention of taking you there again because it's such a huge beach. I mean, you see it, it's just absolutely stunning. It goes on for miles, especially when the tide is out. I had my art stuff in the car, and it was like this period of time, this small window of time where the sun was out. So I grabbed the bag and I ran out to the beach and I just started creating. I had no one really approach me. No one came up to me and asked me anything. I had one guy trying to get down off the oh, ledge sorry, and I was sat right in his way with this little pooch. But other than that, no one really bothered this me. But there was this huge storm cloud coming in. Absolutely fantastic. I really wanted to push that whole idea of bodies of water because there's some beautiful lakes in the Lake District. Some of you may have already visited. Well, if not, then Google it because you'll see what I mean. And I just think that I want to get better at, at kind of, you know, telling that story of a body of water in a way that I feel satisfied by. That's something I'm trying to teach myself. So going to the sea was a great way to start. The first one I did, which you will have seen, that I will just want to chat to you about in these art graphs. I'm trying to really find it. We're so close to, got the book around the wrong way. We're so close to like a huge amount of uh, sketchbook tours. This was the first one I did. And what I like about it is the rocks. You had sort of a few rocks there, which you've seen, you know, some sprays of water. Obviously this line, you know, was nowhere near this line. But, you know, you can do what you want really, can't you? And there's this huge storm cloud coming in and you can see that obviously the rain had 
was coming out of that cloud in uh, in the sea. If you look at the colour variations, you can see that the white does have a tendency to make it chalky, but I just think that's quite atmospheric. So I really like that one. The second one you didn't see, but I wanted to abstract it a bit more. So I wanted to just create something that reads that, and then what I was going to do was work back into it. But when I got home, I decided I didn't want to touch it because there's things about it that I really like and it memorializes the time I spend there, the very short period of time. I was there for no more than like 20 minutes. <sighs> but I did grab some found objects. Oh. What have you found? Oh my god, that's beautiful. Oh, that one's going in the pocket. Starting to rain. Oh, it's very sandy. When wet, it has like this speckling inside and this stone that my husband found me that has the most beautiful array of colors. I really wanted to have this whole swatch -a rooney fest outside because the idea of having like an outdoor swatch -a rooney is just a fabulous notion, but I think we're gonna have to reserve that for longer and better weather. So we are going to swatch the art graphs. Some of the swatcheroonies might be slightly challenging and the only reason is, is because I've compromised the colors, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start with this one. And I know I've done swatches of these before, but there are people who haven't seen it and I'm going to add a white. Yeah, so you can kind of see how Pigment need that is. Oh, that is beautiful, isn't it? Bowl of water, I think, is needed. So then we've got the yellow ochre. Nice. Um, with a bit of white on that as well. See how, I mean, I know it goes a bit chalky, but I I really like that. Um, I can't remember what this colour is. I think this is dark ochre, but it's full of sand. Only helps with the... Uh, that's nice. Oh, that is so delicious. I absolutely just love working in these. This one I think is a medium brown. It's got more like a red hue in that one actually. Bit of that. See, very purpley. Really, really nice. Just banging these out for you. Dark brown. Um, it's got quite a varied grey, isn't it? It's almost got like a... Oh, that is just delicious. Bit of a grey tone undertone, not gonna do the black. I am gonna do the primary blue for you. See what I mean? That is not a variation, it's just because. Oh, here we go, look. There we go. Bit of that, bit of that white in there. So you can really, and you can water them down. You know what I mean? You get some really great marks. The yellow, and that's turned into a green because I've bloody blue on. I cross contaminate, I'm terrible. Nice. Absolutely beautiful, lovely yellow. Again, you can mix it up and they mix as well. And then this red, um, I mean, do you see the difference in the reds? 
that's quite important actually. And again with the white you can make a beautiful set of pinks, wet them down. The other thing you do, you can mix them, which is what I do a lot. So nice teals, you can mix them with, with a black and get a beautiful range of greens. Uh, you can get a beautiful purple and again mixed in with the white. You see what I mean? So there's there's so much variation, but just for argument's sake, this is the graphite. It's not as strong as I would want out of a graphite, but you know, again, you can mix that. I mean, that's got compromise in it and terrible. And obviously the black, just so you get, is black, yeah? I mean, beautiful. And they dry so fast. The drying time on them is fast. Like, I can't even tell you. They do stain. The pigment on them is, is so high, like, it's just packed with those pigments, yeah? Right, that it does stain. If that matters to you, you yeah. know, it shouldn't, because at the end of the day, you can't make much without a few broken eggs. I can't remember the true saying, but you get my drift. And those are almost dry. So even the black, which is the most one we did, you see a few patches there, but it's almost dry. That's indoors as well. So when you've got the breeze and stuff outdoors, absolutely fabulous. Can't recommend that enough. If you don't want all three packs, the only other thing you can do is, I mean, for example, you could argue that this one is slightly superfluous other than the white and you wouldn't be wrong. Okay, because this one is graphite and that one is a black. If you were to buy the six, you get a black with the six anyway. So I have two blacks. But the reason I got this, even though there's a graphite one, which I haven't used a huge amount and a second black is be purely because of the holder. So once I get my hands on that emerald green and magenta, I will then potentially put this, the black away and keep it as a spare. Put the graphite in with my so water soluble graphite box and then use these two get the green one the emerald green and then have two whites you see what i mean but that's the reason i got it was because i found this to be very very useful if it came with like a, like this was in a tin and the tin clipped and then you could use the back of the tin to kind of mix do you know what i mean i would pay a little bit more money for that so packaging, although useful, it could have been better. Do you know what I mean? Put the cork inside a tin and then you have a lid. And then when you pull the lid out, you can use it much like, like a watercolor palette where you use the lid as a mixing station. That would have been great actually. And even more useful if that tin had like a little slot in it that you can, for you to put like a water brush in there you know, so then it would be this in a tin with that, then it would be like a proper go, a go thing. Like shove it in your overall pockets with a sketchbook in the other, you know, like that. That would be great. I'm always looking for a way to minimize my go bag. You'll laugh when, when you see my new go bag, which is another video I'm working on. <laughs> they are expensive. I'm not gonna get out of that. But if you just wanted one or two colors you can buy the individual blocks but problem is it just comes in a plastic kind of envelope so it doesn't even come in like a single cork thing and you can't buy the cork separate you know if you wanted to buy them and then you make your own mm, yeah they need to work harder on this i could also make my own but not out metal out wood and then use like yacht varnish so there are things you can do, but the level of effort you need to go to when in fact they're already kind of halfway there just seems a bit pointless. Anyway, I'll figure that out, but yes. Pros, well, most things, the colors, the versatility, the pigments are just on fire, people. Love it. Cons, packaging and delivery. They're great if you just have them on your desktop you know, and you just have the palette on your desktop. But even this, like when this is wet, Trying to get this back on isn't so bad. But when you're trying to get it off, it's almost like this mental suction takes place and you're like, you know, it's an absolute bloody nightmare. The suction on it is just ridiculous. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to show you some other work kind of like a work flip through using the art graphs on their own but also using the art graphs with other medias just so you can see how i've been using them and the versatility so this is just pieces i've done just to kind of give you an idea of how i'm how i'm using them all right so i'm going to go most recent this was inspired by an artist that i saw on instagram who was just putting some stuff down and then he was merging it in but just before he merged it in he was plopping colors just on the canvas and then he was getting it in like this sorry my dogs are moving about you probably see them under the table nightmare so i really really liked that love the color combination obviously you saw my seascape i think this is all i'm going to show you this now this is on another video but the reason i'm showing you this is because this is the sort of thing that i would have done in those art graphs so you can see i did the bottom there the actual ground and then i reworked it on this date and time which is what i ordinarily would do let's sketchbook number two which is the mall skein smaller version of, of the big one no there's none no more in that one the jumbo which is the A3 Moleskine, and I have tabbed some of these. This is wet and wet. Put in the ground and then working in it with the graphite. Potentially I would go in again and do it again, but I loved it so much the way it is that I just couldn't change anything about it. This is another one I did, and that one I just did a really quick rendering. This is just powdered soft pastel that I accidentally brushed off and made this amazing kind of almost shooting star effect. And I loved it so much I couldn't get rid of it. So that's another example of what I do. And I don't know whether I've got any more on this one. Now, some of the more substantial pieces. So here's one. So what I would do is just plonk the plonk it on and then I would wait for it to dry and then I would build it up something like this. So this, would, this is mixed media. That's oil pastels, Neo 2s, soft pastels, everything in the kitchen sink thrown at pieces like this. And then I would quite often gouge it out with the end of the brush or the end of the paintbrush and create some texture on there. This is a piece I'm not 100% with, but you know, it's just one of them, isn't it? You just sort of churn them out. This is a lighter version and they're done with the art graphs. This was inspired by the weather at the moment. We've just received our first snow, so this is perfect for that. And again, this is one that you will have seen on my community page, but I would then build them up. Oil pastels, soft pastels, Neo 2s, anything, everything in the kitchen sink, just to really kind of get those textures. And likewise, this has also been sort of gouged out there. You can sort of see it, see it there. So that's how I use the art graft in more substantial pieces. I never do works like this going, they are substantial. I just do them. And this was my part of my rainy day challenge where I was taking studies from existing finished pieces and reimagining them and, and trying to really push my marks, push it further and not be so worried. And as it happens, this is one of few, very few actually where I, I'm going to be making prints out of this one. I'm very, very proud of that. This is how I use it. Small, but a fabulous little fit through. Just to give you an idea of what I would use, it's certainly in a studio context rather than an out and about. So yeah. By the way, I should mention that I'm not sponsored or paid to do this review. It's just they've become such an integral part of my initial process. I really felt that this was a really good video to kind of get out there, create, so that, you know, that they get they get the mention I think they deserve, other than the packaging. Even if you were to sell the packaging separate, you know, come up with a, a designed metal tin with a pen bit that's big enough to hold one of these, or the bigger ones, which is the Derwin. Just saying. And I'll expect royalties on that as well. Here's to another week, guys. Here is to another week. And thank you again for coming back each week and supporting me and the people that comment and like and bell my bob. Can't thank you enough. So keep up the fabulous work because it really does help the channel. It helps me get one step closer to the goal, which is being a self-sustaining artist. It really, really does help. If you haven't already, subscribe. It's free. 
I say that every week, but it is, it's true. I'll see you next week. Mwah.